old C.L. Thomas here coming to you from beautiful Cape Cove, Harbor, Maine, a town as redundant as it sounds. Today I'm introducing a whole bundle of shows we did in 2017. Yup, see it was just last year that I found myself here in front of the cameras after being told by some of you folks at my live show that you'd like to be able to tune in to your TV or your computer and hear what new thing I found that ain't right in this crazy world. So we sat down and put all them together for one big show. Now if you ain't seen me before, here's a little bit of a heads up. The show's called That Ain't Right. And there's just some of the things that caught me off guard in today's world. Some is backed by family or friends, some by the calendar or time of year, and some by just going about my daily routine. And finally, well, some just pop up into my, well, what my wife, my love muffin, squeeze, squeeze, what she calls that twisted, curvy place, the mind of C.L. Thomas. <laughs> so let's get started, and hey, why not start with one of them twisty, curvy ones? Here you go, enjoy. Now this one's a little peculiar, but I shared it with my other friends and they said I should share it with you here today, so I will. Let me say I'll start off by saying I shop at Deb and Lou's Market just down the road. It costs a bit more, but I know the money's going to Deb and Lou's kids and their sneakers and backpacks and not sitting in some big conglomerate's Wall Street money market fund. You know them little independent markets we got all over the state of Maine with the, the old wooden worn out floors that slope down towards the butcher counter and then back up to the chip aisle. Oh yeah, they, it, it's amazing. So I'm pushing my little cat. They even got smaller cats on account of because the aisle's so narrow, not like them big box stores. So I'm going down the chip aisle. Oh, I seen ketchup flavored chips. Really? Do we need that? Well, I'm getting sidetracked. That's for another video. But anyway, so I'm going down the aisle and I'm looking for my chips and, and I'm humming away to myself as I'm apt to do. And I even know what I was humming. I was humming raindrops keep falling on my head on account of because it was coming down in buckets on the drive here. So there I was humming this and up comes this sweet little old lady coming right at me and we nod as we pass and we go about our business. Then I turn down the next aisle looking for some dip for my chips and don't you know that little old lady's coming back up and we pass. But this time what I heard shocked me and rocked me to my core. She was humming, raindrops keep falling on my head. <sighs> yup, in this age of warnings about internet security and identity theft, nobody warns you about sweet little old ladies and this crime. She hijacked my hum, and <laughs> that ain't right. We'll catch you another time. Stop. Thanks for stopping it. <laughs> well, there. So now these next three episodes got a seasonal thing. Actually, just summer and fall. Winter kind of just jumped right by me. Between that cold snap we had, what was it, a week of highs in the single digits, and then that blizzard, or they called it a snow bomb, I think that's what they called it, yeah, whatever that is. I believe old CL's brain froze right up, and you know I couldn't think of nothing. So, enjoy these ones coming up here. Today, we're going to talk about doing nothing. This past summer, I got a phone call from a friend of mine down in Florida way, and he says, Oh, hey, CL, how's things up in beautiful vacation land? I told him I wasn't doing much vacationing because, well, I'm a married man, and if you got a wife like I do, I call mine my love muffin, squeeze, squeeze. Anyway, if you got a wife, don't she give you them what we call honeydew list? You know, honey, do this, honey, can you do this, honey, do... so she keeps me kind of busy. But don't get me wrong now, when it come down to it, I know how to relax some. Matter of fact, just a couple weeks ago, we was up at my brother-in-law's camp. Beautiful place out in the woods, little cabin, right beside a little river. And it's a beautiful little stream, goes right by. One day I found a great camp chair, and I dragged her right down to the water's edge, sat right down, put my feet up, and watched the world go by. 
Don't you know about mid-afternoon, here comes the love muffin, screaming at me from up above the thing, says, yeah, honey, you know you've been there most of the day. I just look up at her and say, find out what you're good at and stick to it. She kind of scowls at me. And then, then the phrase that my mother always said to me, so I decided to say it right back at her. I said, hey, hey, honey, you know the hardest thing about doing nothing? It's knowing when you're done. I think it was her time to say, that ain't right. Well, it's that time of year again, chill in the air. Autumn leaves falling and blowing around the yard. Set your clock back, fall back, fall back. Getting ready for the winter, you know that white stuff is coming. Brr. It's an interesting time in my neighborhood in old Cape Cove Harbor. Watching the neighbors, I do get a chuckle out of them. I got one boy what won't let one leaf fall on his beautiful lawn. He's out there starting late September. Soon as that first leaf falls, he's got his rake in his bag and he's got it all up. Oh, he's kind of obsessive about it. He always says, oh, you gotta stay ahead, you gotta stay, can't let him pile up. One year I offered to have my dog chase his cat up the tree. That way his cat can start knocking the leaves off the tree before the wind blows them down. <laughs> Scary thing was, I think he stopped and thought about it. Wouldn't be surprised to see next year have a ladder right up against the tree and him up there raking the leaves right off the tree. Then I got another neighbor, the what uses one of them big blower sucker machines with the big bag and he blows them all into the corner of his yard and then flips the switch and it sucks it all up in this big vacuum cleaner and mulches it in into a big bag. And I'll, I'll tell you, it's a pretty slick, but boy, that whining noise, it goes through the whole neighborhood. Wee! Kind of reminds me of an old girlfriend I had once. But uh, anyway, I, you know, it, 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 it's kind of different. I just don't, oh, of course, then I got the, the big neighbor that, always has the fancy newest cars and and he's got a whole crew come right over in a big old pickup truck some landscaping company I don't know and they either got a team of rakers or they got a couple of guys with a big old driving thing with a huge vacuum and I, I don't know what he pays for that but now here's the thing I seen both them neighbors at the dump this past Saturday morning and we got talking about what we was gonna do for the day and don't you know both of them was bragging say they was going to their private gym to work out and I'm shaking my head thinking do you know if either of you boys just put on a pair of jeans and working gloves and got on the busy end of a rake maybe you wouldn't have to pay for a gym and all them fancy boys coming over with their machines <laughs> But that's just me. Oh, yeah, one last thing about that falling back, setting your clock right and all that. I was driving through the big city the other day, and I seen one of these office buildings with a big old electronic clock on the side, big advertisement for the company and all that. But the thing was, they hadn't reset their clock. They were still on standard time. And I'm thinking, oh, there's a good advertisement for your business. Come do business with us when we're so lazy we can't even set our clocks right. <laughs> that ain't right. Well, it being autumn and harvest time and Halloween, I thought I'd tell you a little spooky tale. Now, I've heard tales like this before, but this actually happened to old CL, so I thought I'd tell you folks about it and see if it rattled you to your bones the way it did me. Now, this has to do with me waking up in the morning. Now, let me first say that I usually sleep pretty soundly, solid all the way through the night, although my wife, the love muffin, squeeze, squeeze, has recently forbid me to eat any of them little chocolate bars before I go to bed. She says it gets me tossing and ten, and she seen my foot sticking out of the bed one night, and then I, I slide over on one side, and then I toss over on the other. It, it, it ain't pretty, but I digress. Yeah, the, so this, this one morning, I, I think I, I slept pretty sound, and I was just laying there, and, and there, and then, 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 then the alarm went off, and, and I kind of blinked a couple of times and opened up my eyes and looked over at the clock, but I couldn't see the clock, and I realized there was something in the way. So I reached over, and I felt something. I grabbed it, and I moved it, and then I could see the clock. But when I looked up, I realized what I was holding was I moved my own hand. 
Yes, sir, I slept with my hand over my head, and my hand fell asleep, and I was lying there holding my own hand and not feeling it. Buddy, you lay there half asleep holding your own hand and not feeling it. it it'll scare you. I kind of jumped and let it go, and it hit the headboard, and, and then it started waking up. You know, I put it down by my side, and it got all prickly feeling, like when, you know, your foot falls asleep, and you stand up, and you get all them pins and needles. But, yes, sir, I'll tell you, you start grabbing your own hand and not feeling it, it'll rattle you to your bones. I got a little freaked out, I did, but then I got thinking about sleeping and, well, the big nap, you know, and I was thinking, wouldn't it be nice if when that old grim reaper comes along and calls you for that last walk, all he would do is take that big stick of his and touch your body and kind of everything went all kind of numb and then he put his arm around you and says, oh, come on, old CL, time for take the long dead nap. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that would be too bad. I kind of like that. But for right now, I hope you never have to hold your own hand and not feel it, because if you do, well, that ain't right. Well, there you go, buddy. Now these next ones is just some things what stuck in my head as I went about my daily chores and errands. Take a look. Gray hairs, wrinkles, too many candles on the cake, the shelf on the shirt where none used to be. Yep, these are all signs of getting older. Now, for the longest time, I've been all right with this thing called aging. It's that earth going around the sun thing that you can't stop. And the old adage says you worry about things you can control. And stopping the earth going around the sun, that much control I ain't got. So I've been kind of accepting with this getting older thing. Key word here is kind of. See, sometimes the whole process just sneaks up on you and gives you the old one, two, or in this case, one, two, three. Here's what happened. First, I go down to my mailbox, and there's my reapplication for the AARP card. Now, I am used to this one. Been coming since I was 50, and that's been a few years. So yeah, it's okay, ain't too bad, and as much as it hurt the first time I signed up, well, as my wife, the love muffin, squeeze, squeeze, she pointed out they do got some good discounts and deals. So, so what that was strike one, getting the new AARP card in the mail. Now next, I go to get my hair cut. Like always, I go down the snip and clip, and this nice lady, she snips and cuts. No shampoo. This place just sprays your hair, and no, no, no shampoos and, and dries. Like they, they cost more when they do all that. So anyway, she's about done with the haircut, and then she's got scissors in her hand, and she starts clipping. But she's clipping my eyebrows. Says, let me just trim these up for you. And I'm thinking, geez, do I really look like that Andy Rooney boy what used to be on 60 Minutes? You know that old boy that whined about nothing. Do I got them eyebrows like him that look like he had caterpillars above his eyeballs? <laughs> geez, that hurt. Strike two. Now, last but not least, it was when I went down to the Freeport Outlet stores. They got a Pepperidge Farm bread market there. And I go, and they got good deals there, too. You starting to see a theme about good deals getting older? Anyway. So I get my two-for-one whole wheat bread things, and I go up to the counter, and there's this woman, and she looks right at me, checking me out, and says, you got your senior discount card? Now, see, the AARP card, that, that, that could be spit out by a computer, because it says when, you, when you're 50. And the eyebrow clipping, well, chalk that up to hygiene or the little lady doing her job, I don't know. But when someone's basically looking at you in the eye and says, you look old. You got your old card for the discount? I suppose I ought to get used to it, but it ain't right. Today we're going to talk about doctor's appointments. Now that word right there, appointment, sort of says you got an agreement between the two people at what time you're going to meet. Today I had a 9 a.m. doctor's appointment, and I got there a little early, about quarter of, just in case I had more forms to fill out or something like that. You know, they always got something new. But turns out they didn't. I walked in. There was another woman waiting in the waiting room. I sauntered up to the nurse. She checked me in. I grabbed a magazine and sat down. 
I was kind of wondering what time this other woman's appointment was. Thought I had the first one of the day. Anyway, I'm sitting there looking through the magazine when, don't you know, just about 9 a.m., right on the nose, in comes the doctor. But he's coming from the outside. And he sort of gives us a little nod, walks up to the nurse, checks in with her, and then saunters down to his office. And I'm thinking, geez, you know, in this day of instant communication, couldn't I have gotten a, an email or one of them text messages? How about an old-fashioned phone call? Say that the old boy's running behind. But apparently he thinks his time is more valuable than mine. And they say time is more valuable than money. Money, you can work harder and get more. But time, you waste an hour, boom, it's gone. So I'm sitting there just fuming about him being late and all that, and, and I got to thinking about it. And they say, uh, what, realtors, they are uh, retailers, yeah, retailers, they got customers, and, uh, and lawyers, yeah, lawyers, they got clients, and doctors, well, they got patients, because apparently if you are one, you have to have some, and that ain't right. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about pumping your own gas. Now some of you may say, CL, how is something as simple as pumping your own gas going to turn into an episode of That Ain't Right? Well, let me tell you, Mr. Man, in this day of technological advances, it can get pretty messy. First off, if you're from around here, you know we got all kinds of options to pump your own gas. But did you know if you're from the state of New Jersey, you can't pump your own gas. That's right, in that state they got a law what says someone else has to do it for you. Found that out when I pulled off the turnpike in the rest area to get some gas and all these boys come out to help me pump. I guess it's a good thing for the economy and jobs for folks from different countries get work right away without much training. Well, but I digress. Anyway, back here to Maine, we got options. Me, most of the time I pump my gas at one of them wholesale clubs you can save a couple of bucks and if you've listened to my other videos you know the importance of a dollar to old CL. Anyway, with these wholesale clubs, first thing you got to do is scan your membership card. And geez, do you know when I scanned it last time I saw they got a little warning stick that says don't look into the uh, laser beam light because you could get hurt. And I'm thinking if you're stupid enough to turn your head up and look into that laser you deserve to go blind. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting off track again. So, so, so belong, be, if you belong to one of these clubs, so, so first you've got to scan your card, then, then you've got to put in your credit card, or God forbid you've got, a, you've got a debit card and you've got to punch in your PIN number. And this is, yeah, it gets complicated. This is all before you even pick up the hose and put it in your tank. And, 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 and I'll tell you, uh, but what I'm talking about today is when you pay ahead of time. You know, you go in and tell the boy how much you want, and, and then you go back out and pump your gas. And, and well, here's what's happened to me. I went in, I told the boy I wanted $10 worth, and I go back out and start pumping. And you know it's filling up lickety split with that money dial going as fast as fast can be, and the actual amount of fuel going in is just tick, 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 because it's so expensive these days. But that's another story for another time. Anyway, so lickety split real fast, up until, oh, I don't know, about $9, she starts to slow down. Then it's like 9.95. It starts to creep. The last five cents, 9.96, 9.97, 9.98. And I'm thinking, what's going inside that pump? Is there some boy in there holding a surprise patty, saying, oh, 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 "Watch this! We're gonna get to sneak up to him at 10. He's gonna, he's gonna be all surprised. 98, 99, 10 dollars surprise." No, sir, it ain't no surprise. That's what I asked for. No sense in creeping up to it. Just give me my $10 and let me go on my way. And some do it at the dollar mark. It'll slow down at $9, then creep all the way up to 10 And I'm thinking, geez, you got the technology. Stop it right at $10 and let me keep going. Now, it may not sound like much, but I'll tell you what, you're in a hurry and you don't see that tick, 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 just give me my $10 and I'm on my way, because if you don't, well, pfft, that ain't right. Indeed, that ain't right. 
So these last two, I got to thank family and friends for being the inspiration. First, I got to sit back and watch my buddy just rant away. That was some fun. And last, well, hats off to probably the best source of chuckles I got in my life, my daughter. Enjoy. <laughs> So my buddies and I were out for lunch at one of them sandwich shops, the one what's got that French name, Au Bon Pain. It's where the, you order up at the counter and then you sit back down in the booth. Now there was three of us, so I ordered first, then John, then Danny. Now, now, now Danny is the older, not so statesman of our group. <laughs> He don't take good to change, and he's kind of set in his ways. And, and when he sees something changing, boy, he can start ranting. But this time, well, we kind of understood, because let me tell you, <laughs> it went right, is what went down. Old Danny orders a sandwich and a soda, and the young clerk asked what size soda he would like. And he says, small. And she says, we don't have small, just medium and large. Well, Mr. Not-So-Statesman just says, really? She smiles and says, yes, sir, would you like medium or large? We just watch as his face gets all red the way it's apt to do when he runs into something of this nature. He'll swallow some and then, depending on the person, might engage them in a bit of a question regarding the stupidity of their statement. But in this case, seeing the youthful gal and knowing the brick wall what luck might lay between them curly blocks and innocent eyes, well, old Dan just says, medium, and shakes his head. He was saving it all for us. So she brings the soda and sandwich, lickety-split, and we all walk away as Danny's head starts shaking back and forth like a dog with a tick in his ear, and he sits down and starts to unload. So did I hear right, he says, old Mr. Old Bon Pan don't have no small sizes, just medium and large. Now how in all that saying and right can you just jump right to medium without having a small fist? Correct me if I'm wrong, but don't medium mean something in the middle, then you've got to have something on either side? I mean, why don't we just have bigger and biggest, leave out the big? A bowl to bucket inst with our soups instead of just a cup. Oh, he kept going. He said, yes, Mr. Old Bon Pan, it goes like this, big, bigger, biggest for a reason. You got three, count them three choices. He was all wound up, veins popping out, upset. John and I just sat back laughing. Here's an idea, why not just start with large and rewrite the whole English language? No adding the E-I or the E-S-T. Why don't we just go right to friggin' huge and make us swim in our cups of soda to Oh, he was all upset. And speaking of language, he says, what does Au Bon Pan mean anyway? Oh, I know, I know, he says, Mr. Medium Large and No Small, Au Bon Pan means one big pain in the you-know-where. Oh, we did get quite a chuckle out of that rant. But I got me thinking on the way home, I wonder if he was going to share this with his wife, and she might tell him about sizes for women's clothes. Oh, wait till he finds out about that. Yep, women's clothes, I found out, start with zero. Yes, indeed, a woman can wear a size zero. A size nothing. And you know, <laughs> that ain't right. Now, as some of you may know, I got a live show called Tourist, Teenagers, Technology, and Other Things That Ain't Right. You should check it out sometime. Well, anyway, the other day, the boys and I, in our morning coffee, we was down at the old Chat and Chew downtown, and don't you know, teenagers and technology come up in our morning discussion. The boys was all lamenting about how their teenagers seem to always come up with the hands out asking for money. You know, Daddy, can I borrow five dollars? Daddy, I need ten bucks. Go down see my friends. Daddy, well, you, you know how it goes. But then one of the boys speaks up, and he's in retail working at that local uh, haberdashery. <laughs> Ain't that a good word? I love that word. Anyway, so he works in retail, and he says down at the store they got this newfangled technology cash register machine. It tells you not only about how much change you give back and the tax included, but it tells you about the receipt tape, too. It's got warnings when you're about to run out of the tape. He says this new technology could work with your teenagers and the money. 
Here's how it goes. He says the machine first, when you're almost out of tape, the tape gets a little stripey, a little tiger stripey right imprinted at the end of the tape. Tells you, you know, you've got to go get out and get another roll. Then when you're just about dead out of tape, a little red light goes on the machine. It's kind of saying, yo, I told you, you need another tape. Now, now here's where it gets really good. If you miss them first two warnings, the stripe and the red light, you go to try it again, the drawer locks right up. Yup, won't even let you in. You can't do nothing. Go get more tape, buddy. I told you. Transition over, bing, bang, boom. <laughs> How's that for technological advancement? So we was all saying, you know, that could work with the kids, too. First time they come with a handout, you say, well, well, yeah, here's five dollars, but, but you might think about getting a job. That's the first warning, the little stripes on the tape. Second time, Daddy, I just need ten bucks to go out with my friends. Well, well, here's ten bucks, but here's the newspaper, too. Look at the want ad, sat of interview, and go get yourself a job. Then the third time, Daddy, I need some more money for the... Nope! Cash register is closed. You go get a job. You didn't hear my first two warnings. The bank of daddy is closed. <laughs> I think that would work, don't you? Yes, indeed. We was all chuckling about that. Then I thought about it when I got home, and I was thinking, geez, if I tried that with my teenager, she'd probably say, Daddy, that ain't right. <laughs> well, thanks for stopping in. Oh, yeah, bank of daddy's closed. Oh, I ain't doing that well, there you go, the best of 2017. Now don't you worry, old CL's gonna keep right at it at 2018, because you know that ain't right, we'll just keep chugging right along. And I think we all know it ain't that hard, you ain't gotta do but wake up and take a walk and look around, and chances are you're gonna find something to make you think that ain't right. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Best of 2017, I like that concept.